Hey there folks, welcome to part four of the demonstration for the leaded steel bushing for machining 220 in the machine technology department at Laney College. Last time we got this far with the part, right? We finished one side completely, but we still need to finish that back side, okay? And so now what we need to do is uh, mount our soft jaws, cut the soft jaws, mount the part in the soft jaws, and then face the back side and put a chamfer on it. So that's going to be steps number 19 through 22. And you can see that step number 19 is install three jaw chuck, which I've already done, okay? Uh, and then we're going to put the soft jaws in and bore the soft jaws out for a slip fit to the bushing OD. So what are soft jaws and why are we going to use them? A pretty common problem in machining is how do you hold on to a part so that you can finish its back side? So one way to do this is to put this diameter in a four jaw chuck and then indicate it. But the problem that you run into then is that that's a lot of work. It's a lot of fiddling around. It would be nice if we could just hold this uh, on this finished diameter so that we register off of the finished diameter and everything is running concentrically to it. Okay? So we could use something like a three jaw chuck, right? Although the issue is that the three jaw chuck doesn't repeat perfectly. But let's say that it did repeat perfectly. We would still have a problem, which is that these hardened steel jaws that have the serrations in them are going to damage this surface as soon as you bite down on it. So one way to kill two birds with one stone is to use soft jaws. Okay? These jaws replace the hardened steel jaws in the three jaw chuck. They're made out of aluminum. Okay? And the nice thing about them is that not only are they softer than the material we're trying to hold, so they're not going to damage the part. Once we put it into the three jaw chuck, then we can take a cut on it, right? And the thing about these three jaw chucks is that they don't repeat very well over their entire range, right? But they repeat very, very well over a small range. So if we cut this to very close to the diameter that we're trying to hold, and then all we're going to do is open and close it on that diameter, then that actually should repeat very, very well, and the part should run very true to the spindle axis because the soft jaws were cut in the same setup. So as long as we don't take the soft jaws out and put them back in, then the diameter on the jaws themselves will run very close to the spindle axis. Therefore, our part will run very close to the spindle axis. One thing I'm sure you can surmise about this process is that if we're taking a cut on these soft jaws every time we put them into the, into the chuck, then we're going to run out of material eventually, right? So this is definitely a consumable item. They don't last forever. And um, I'll show you in a moment how we try to get as many uses out of them as possible. But for now, let me go ahead and remove these jaws and put these soft jaws in. It helps to put it into low gear. Okay, make sure these are really, really clean because we don't want to clamp down onto any schmutz here. And there you have it. So here's the idea, right? We close down around the part like so. Now, although it's pretty obvious that someone used this for exactly this purpose uh, the last time around, uh, because this was probably put in a different three jaw chuck, and the jaws may not have been in the same order, and in any case, when you take something out, you put it back in, it shifts a little bit, this diameter here is not going to be running true to the spindle axis anymore. So we still have to take a cut on here, even though it looks like it fits. 
Another thing to note is that this mechanism has a little bit of slop in it, okay? So these jaws are not super rigidly held right now. They have a little bit of movement back and forth, okay? So if I were to turn the chuck on right now and take a cut on this inside diameter, then these jaws would naturally fling outward because of centrifugal force, right? But then when I go in and clamp on my part, I'm going to be clamping inward, not outward. What that means is that if I don't machine this in the clamped position, then I'm not going to get the repeatability that I'm looking for. And that's what we have these for, okay? We have a whole bunch of hardened steel dowel pins that we use to put into the center of the jaws and clamp down around it. That way we are, you know, we still have access to where we want to cut, but we're clamping down on something so we're machining our bore in the as-clamped state. And that's very important. It's also important, as I alluded to earlier, okay, that we use these jaws as many times as we can. And the way to do that is to use the largest possible pin diameter that you can so that you remove the least amount of material from the inside diameter. If I used a tiny little pin in there and gripped on there, yeah, I could machine uh, a bore that fit my part, right? But the next person who comes in to use these soft jaws is going to have to use the next smallest pin so that they have material to cut off. But you already cut it to the smallest pin, right? So that was it. We only get one usage out of these jaws. That's no good. So use the largest pin that you possibly can. One final point is, why use the pin at all? Other than simply just getting the maximum usage out of the jaws, why would we want to use a pin anyway? Why don't we just tighten these jaws down against themselves? Like this. Why don't we just do that and then machine them in that orientation? Well, if you machine this to a slip fit for your part, and then you try to put your part in there, right? you're not going to be able to grip the part because you've run out of room. The jaws are already bottomed out on each other. So we have to machine against the pin, and then we have to take the pin out so that we have room to move to travel to actually clamp the part. I hope that that makes sense. Okay, so this is where the part is right now. So let me go ahead and remove the part, but keep it in the general area. Let's see what the next smallest pin is that we can use there. And actually, it looks like these soft jaws have been used a fair number of times, so this is probably the last time we can use it. So I sometimes just hold these pins with a little uh, magnet on the end of a scriber or something, just so it's easier to handle. Uh, let's check the quarter-inch pin, see if that goes. No, so, so that looks like it's too big. Let's try the 3 sixteenths, and that goes. Okay, 3 sixteenths is the winner. Okay, so let me go ahead and close down around the 3 16 dowel, like so. Good and tight. So one of my little tricks to tell for sure that I've cleaned up this entire diameter is just to paint the inside surface with some kind of Sharpie or maybe Dicom, so like this. So just paint all those surfaces in there. And then when I go in to take my cut, if I've removed all the dicum, then I know that I've cleaned up those entire surfaces and they're cylindrical again. Because think about what this is right now. This is three separate arcs, which used to be part of one continuous diameter, but now we've moved them in closer, okay? So it's now like three lobes rather than a true diameter. So when we go in to take a cut, it's not going to clean up everywhere on those surfaces, okay? It's going to clean up in one part of the surface before it cleans up everywhere else, okay? So we would really like to know that we've cleaned up the entire diameter. By the way, a quick way to check to make sure that the soft jaws that you're grabbing have enough material on them so that you can clean them up to fit your part is to just take those jaws loosely, okay, and then put them together like that in their most closed position. If your part can fit between the jaws, then there's already been too much material removed from those soft jaws and you can't use it for this part. You could use it for other parts, but you couldn't use it for this one. So this one would be good. In fact, these look like they've only had like one cut on them. 
But what about these? Yeah, so that's definitely not good, okay? Do yourself a favor and just do this quick check before you actually install the soft jaws because it can save you a lot of time. A couple of other things too is that we've got two different sizes of soft jaw. We've got these bigger jaws which are for the large lathe chucks that go into the sharp lathes. Uh, and then we've got these smaller ones that go on the Acras and the new Leblons, okay? And the other thing is that these come in a matched set, okay? Once we start cutting on these, we're going to want to keep them all together, all right? And so we, we try to mark them with unique identifying symbols, um, and stamp them into the aluminum so that we can always keep them together. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and put in the boring bar that we were using before. We only need to cut back about an inch or so because the diameter that we're going to be holding on to is uh, one and an eighth of an inch long. And, you know, we just want to hold on to as much of this as we can, okay? Um, there's already a shoulder on the soft jaws here where the previous people stopped cutting. And I measured it and it's about, well, it's a little bit less than an inch back. So I'm just going to cut up to that shoulder. I'll go ahead and go in and just bump up against the shoulder. Put a little piece of tape on there. Just the tape is right up against the, the jaws at this point. All right, so the end of the tape is where we're going to stop. Do a quick little spin test. Okay, that's looking good. All right, let's do it. Okay, I'm going to come in and touch off. All right. Okay, I'm going to take a cut of like 10 thousandths. All right, right there. Okay, so let's see how much of it cleaned up, okay? You can still see a little bit of dicum in there, can't you? So it cleaned up in the centers, but it didn't clean up on the edges right there, okay? So we'd like to be able to clean this up all the way. Now, I'm basically just going to cut this to fit, all right? Um, it's not that important that it be exactly to some size. You just want a slip fit. As close as you can get it while it's still being a slip fit to this diameter is uh, appropriate here, okay? So that's something we can just do iteratively, meaning like guess and check. I'll take another ten thousandths. Okay, so now it's cleaned up pretty much everywhere. And our part still needs a little bit, okay? So maybe another ten thousandths. Okay, I think probably another five ten thousandths. Okay, perfect. That's it. Okay, go ahead and remove the pin. Make sure that your soft jaws and your part are completely free of dirt and chips. Go ahead and put it in and lock it down. Just like that. Go ahead and remove the tool. And just so that I can prove that this really works, let me go ahead and put a test indicator on there. Right there. And let me zero it out. Okay, and let's see how concentrically this diameter is running now. That's pretty good. That's barely any movement at all. Okay. So, yeah, this is a great way to hold a part concentrically. There's a little bit of setup that goes into this, right? So you wouldn't do this just for every part. But in this example, we're mimicking a production run of these bushings. And so if you're only going to do this once for, let's say, hundreds of parts, 
yeah, this is a great way to do your fixturing work up front and then not have to do it for each part. It beats the heck out of using the four jaw chuck. Okay, so step number 20 is to install the bushing in the soft jaws, check, and face the backside to that one inch 630 thousandths overall length. I'm gonna go ahead and use the, um, the roughing tool for this because I, I've got about an eighth of an inch to come off of this uh, backside here. First thing I'm gonna do is just take a cut right where it is so that I have something to measure off of. We come in and touch off. Right there. Okay, move over some small distance and take a cut. Perfect. Now I would measure it in place, except that I've removed so much material from these jaws that I can't really fit a caliper down in there. So I'm gonna have to remove it. Okay, got the calipers right here. Measure over the back side of the part, like so. It says 724 thousandths of an inch. Roughly. So one inch 724 minus one inch 630. I've got 94 thousandths to come off. Put the part back in. The other nice thing about soft jaws is that you actually don't need to clamp as hard, right? So you run much less risk of crushing that diameter, especially on something like this that has a really thin wall right here. Actually, not right here, but over where we're actually clamping, there's a very thin wall. Um, and that's because there's so much more surface contact between the jaws and the diameter that you're holding onto, right? So if there's more surface area in contact, then you don't need to uh, have as much clamping pressure. So this is really nice for holding really delicate parts as well. Turn it on. Okay, and now I'm gonna come and touch off very gently so I don't move the position of that surface right there. Set up the indicator on the bedways. Zero it out, turn it back on. Let's say one cut of 80 and then a cut of 14. There's my 80. All right. And then a cut of 14 to get me to 94. All right, there we go. So next step, number 21, is to cut the 60 thousandths by 30 degree chamfer, just like we did on the other side, but out on this diameter here, the one inch 430 thousandths diameter. So I'm gonna remove the indicator for just a second. Turn this on. Come in kind of close. Okay, and then I'm gonna run the compound back and forth as I move in with the cross slide just until I touch off. All right, there we go, I shaved it. Just shaved that corner right there. Set my indicator back up. Turn it on. Okay, back the tool off a little bit. Then I'm gonna go in with the carriage to the left. 60 thousandths of an inch and then feet across the part. There we go. Remove the indicator, remove the tool. Okay, and then I'm gonna go in and deburr. Just like that. Take the part out. Just one last thing, folks, as a courtesy to the next people who use this machine, go ahead and take these soft jaws out and put the hardened steel jaws back in, okay? Okay, folks, so there it is, all done. And uh, might I say, it looks pretty good. Um, I'm not gonna show you how to make the other one because, well, it's exactly the same except for this one diameter. Um, 
So I leave that to you. I think you're definitely clever enough to be able to do that. Um, so that's actually it for the demonstration for the leaded steel bushing. We still have to go in and do uh, some final inspection, and that actually is pretty interesting for this little part. Um, but that's going to be another video. All right, see ya.